Welcome to Our Hope, a production of Chosen People Ministries. What do John the Baptist, Peter, and Paul have in common? Besides being historical figures in the New Testament, they were all Jewish followers of Jesus. Israel Cohen discovered these men are Jewish when he secretly read the New Testament, a book his rabbi told him never to read. On today's episode, we're interviewing Israel, who is one of our longest serving staff members. He began his work with Chosen People Ministries in 1978 serving in New York, New Jersey, and Florida, and he now serves in the metropolitan Philadelphia area with his wife, Judy. Israel, also known as Uncle Izzy to us here at Chosen People, grew up aware of the distinction between Jews and Christians. Like most Jewish people, he felt that being a Jew meant that he couldn't believe in Jesus. It was only when he joined the Navy that he discovered the truth for himself. And now I introduce the host of Our Hope Podcast, Abe Vazquez. Uncle Izzy, welcome to Our Hope. I'm glad to be here. It's a blessing. This is wonderful. Great. So glad you were able to join us. You know, every time we have a new guest, I love to ask this question. So since you uh, travel a lot, I want to know, what is your favorite food, but your favorite food from New York? In New York? or in Philly, or in, in this area, a nice pastrami sandwich. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got to have a on, on rye with Goulden's. It has to be Goulden's mustard, you know, deli mustard. You can't have none of that French's. Forget that. <laughs> and, and a nice piece of New York cheesecake, the best. There you go. There you go. It's, it, it won't help my diet, but it'll be delicious and nutritious. <laughs> That is awesome. So tell tell me about, uh, you grew up in Philadelphia, is, is that correct? I grew up in Philadelphia uh, until uh, high school age, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, I went to synagogue in Philadelphia mm -hmm. to, with my parents uh, most sometimes, but I had my bar mitzvah uh, in Philadelphia. Uh, we were, you know, not a little more liberal. We kept kosher and all that. My grandmother was alive and she wanted us to go to synagogue. But mm -hmm. I had my bar mitzvah in Philadelphia, and uh, at about the, the age of high school, when I went to elementary, I went to what we used to call junior high school in Philadelphia. I went to what's now called Cherry Hill, New Jersey, which is just across the river from um, uh, Philadelphia, across the Delaware River. And we were basically the first Jewish family in, in the Cherry Hill area. It's now very Jewish. Didn't even have a synagogue there, and now they have a big synagogue. A lot of Philadelphia people moved over to Jersey. So uh, I grew up, uh, really, if you want to know the truth, I, let's face it, I was a dysfunctional Jewish family. <laughs> it's amazing mm -hmm. that that, uh, that, you, that Jesus found me. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. But that was, you know, I, did, I didn't hang out with the Gentiles too much, you know. Uh, my father was concerned about that. So set the stage for me a little bit. What, what was growing up? they're like what was your environment like you know what was it like being the only jewish family in uh in that area in cherry hill i hung out with a lot of gentiles uh in school actually as i lived there for a little while some more jewish people moved in okay mm -hmm. and when i was in school being a cohen you know they gravitated toward me mm -hmm. this was back we're talking about the uh 57 a couple years ago you know mm -hmm. and uh, uh they gravitated and we all went to we went to bandstand together uh you know with dick clark and and we did things together they didn't hang out with the gentile kids there was a few more but shortly after i joined went to high school i really got involved with ham radio with, with i wanted to i had a, a school teacher a shop teacher that that, that was a ham radio guy Mm -hmm. And and uh, he was teaching a class in, in high school uh, at lunchtime of Morse code. So I wanted to join the mm -hmm. Morse code. So most of the Jewish people, kids, didn't join the radio club. 
Maybe that's because it was the ham radio from. I don't know. It was, wasn't kosher. I don't know. I thought it was good. <laughs> There's a kosher ham radio guy. But anyway, so I, I was in that. So I didn't hang out with a lot of Jewish kids. But my entire time I was in high school, I was on the ra ham radio all the time. Right. And at least a short way. And uh, there was Morse code. Mm -hmm. And so that, that was basically my, my entire high school career. I didn't study too well. I just did. Ham. I thought I was going to be a, a ham radio guy and copy Morse code the rest of my life. I was yeah. in for a surprise. <laughs> so that radio, that that was like your uh, your, your Instagram or your TikTok. You were just oh, yeah, kind of addicted right. to it. <laughs> exactly. We don't have it. We didn't have any of this stuff like Instagram and TikTok and and, uh, and Facebook and all. No, we had none of that stuff. Uh, I thought that the be, ham radio, be able to talk to people uh, all the way around the other side of the world, like on Australia. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I'd fall asleep during an English class, and my teacher said, "What's the matter?" Well, I was up all night. I was I was talking to someone in Australia on my ham radio. That is awesome. That is so cool to hear. So, tell me what happened after high school. At what point did you encounter possibly joining the Navy? What what, what led you there? Oh, yeah, that's good. Good point. First of all, in high school, my father wanted me to make sure I took the the uh, college prep courses. Right. And um, I didn't like it at all. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, as a matter of fact, I was in the marching band and I had to quit the marching band because the cal calculus classes were caught, taught at the same time that the band would rehearse. And I, I, I was very disappointed about that. Very disappointed. What did, what did you play in band? I played the baritone horn. Hey, oh, nice. it was great. Boom, 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 boom. Anyway, it was great. I loved it. And, and, and we played these marches and stuff. Yeah. But I had to quit. I was very disappointed. My father wanted me to go to college. So he made me take, he got he had some friends that had connections with the uh, West Point, uh, these play, I forget, the Air Force Academy, I think it might have been. And they, he made me take the test for entrance into the into the Air Force Academy. I'm, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. I felt like I was number number one. Low, the lowest number you can get. I was the last <laughs> one. I, I, so I never got into college. Wow. I, I, went, I, I didn't, no, a nice Jewish boy like me didn't get into college. This is like a, as we say in Yiddish, it's called a Shanda. It's a terrible thing. <laughs> so, you yeah, know, so uh, my father said, What are you going to do with your life? What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. And I thought maybe I'd be a ham radio guy the rest of my life, but I would have been drafted. In 1960, I graduated from high school in the lowest floor of my class. But in ninth, when I graduated, if I didn't go to college, you're in the Army. I, I was nice and healthy, and I was a good guy, so I would have been right in. So in my senior year of high school, I applied to join the Navy. Mm -hmm. And um, they let, I accepted on a Friday in June of 1960. Friday, I was in high school graduating. On a Monday, I was flying to Gray Lakes, Illinois, to boot camp wow. for the United States Navy. Mm. And, and they're marching and screaming. And they, I will never forget this. This was so, there were two things that were incredible in the Navy. One was I get off the bus at Gray Lakes, Illinois, and I'm walking along. And he says, run, 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 Cohen, run, run. I said, uh, uh, sir, uh, I don't run. I said, we don't teach the, teach the Jewish boys any different than the Gentiles. We treat you the same. Get your... And he used some, some language that we might not want to have on a podcast. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and and the second thing that happened is lining up in boot camp that we're going to shave our heads and all that stuff. Mm. And I'm lining up and he looks at me and he says, Cohen, you didn't shave. I said, oh, I didn't shave you. Sir, get in there and shave. And I, 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 sh I never really shaved it. up until that point. I was a late bloomer. And I came out with blood all over my clothes and stuff. He said, Cohen, I didn't ask you to commit Harry Carey. Stop that. What are you, blood? Oh, it was terrible. So uh, <laughs> that was my experience in the Navy. And of course, I didn't know how wow. to swim. I forgot if you join the Navy, you better know how to swim. Yeah. And so they pushed me off of this big 15-foot high tower into the pool. And uh, I learned how to swim. <laughs> no doubt about that. And I know when you were in the Navy, you had an experience where they, they handed out different types of Bibles or, or things like that. What, what was that situation? Oh, that was incredible. When you come into the, you come in, it was a big drill hall, 400 people, you're all naked, you, you had your head shaved, and now it's time to get your uniform. So they give you a sea bag, and you walk down the line. 
And as you walk down the line, they give you your own uniforms. At the end of the line, back then, this is 1960 now, they mm -hmm. said Catholic, Protestant, or Jewish. I said, okay, I'm Jewish. And they put a Bible in your sea bag. Now, I didn't know what to do with the Bible. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was a good luck charm, or maybe it was a rabbit's foot, or be, be like my grandmother's chicken soup. <laughs> I, every time I was sick, if I was sick, yeah. I was coughing and sneezing. My grandmother said, thanks, I'll have some chicken soup. It's still, yeah. it, it'll help you. And so I said, well, I'll have a Bible. Well, so I said, Kid, will it help? She couldn't hide, you know, <laughs> couldn't hide. So yeah. I said, okay. And I put it in my, I'll put it in my pocket. Maybe the bullet will hit my Bible. So I had my Bible. But growing up Jewish, we never really read the Bible. I knew the stories. Uh, you know, I knew uh, about Abraham and about the Purim and, and, and Mordecai and Esther. But I never uh, read the Bible. Wow. So, I mean, you've never read the Bible. So at this point in your life, what would you say your relationship with God was like? Oh, I didn't even know there was a God. I wasn't, mm. I, I had no relationship with God at all. When I was, I was in synagogue mm -hmm. until my bar mitzvah. Okay. Now, when I had my bar mitzvah, I thought maybe I'll be a rabbi. I was up there in the, on the bima and I was, I was saying the prayers. I memorized them, of course. I was saying the prayer, the, the, the reading from the Torah and stuff. And I, but my father said, I said, okay, I'll, I want to keep going to Hebrew school and become a rabbi. He said, no, nah, you don't want to do that. Get a regular job. So he, he didn't want to pay for Hebrew school anymore. Wow. And basically, uh, when it comes to religious background and when it comes to belief in God, I had nothing. Uh, I was, it was just, uh, I'm a nice guy. I'm a ham radio guy. I had all my ham radio buddies. I talked to people all over the world. You know, it was, uh, and I listened. Now I was listening on the short way and I heard people talking about Jesus. Uh, while I was growing up, I was one of these poor Gentiles, but I listened anyway for a little while, you know, but uh, it, 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 it wasn't for me. You know, my rabbi told me, never believe in Jesus. Mm. And that this is when I was bar mitzvah, after the bar mitzvah. He said, I never read the New Testament. Jesus is a Gentile God, and and the, the, the New Testament is a Gentile book. You can't read that stuff. So fast forward, then what is your next encounter hearing about Jesus that then led to the rest of your story. Yeah, that's the story. Well, what happened was after boot camp, I wound up in Morocco, Morocco, North Africa. I was in uh, North Africa, mm -hmm. in Morocco, in the Navy. And little did I know that they had a Bible study group on the base. And these guys were praying for the salvation of the only Jewish guy it was on the base. They were claiming my salvation. Now I was getting drunk every night. I was uh, uh, smoking cigarettes. I figured, you know, I got to be a real sailor. Real sailors drink whiskey and beer, and they smoke cigarettes, and I'm coughing like crazy yeah. and, and uh, getting. Uh, and then one night, one of those fellows from that Bible study came to me when I was kind of sober that one night. And he said, "You're Jewish." I said, "Oh yeah, I'm Jewish." He says, "Do you have a Bible?" He said, Yo, they gave me a Bible when I joined the Navy. Oh, okay. Can you get your Bible? So he, I got my Bible. So here it is. He said, let me see your Bible. Turns the Bible. Isaiah chapter 53. I had no idea what was there. He said, read this. I read Isaiah 53. That is, I couldn't believe it. Because I was pre-evangelized with shortwave and, and, uh, People, people across the street when I was living in Philadelphia, they were saying, Jesus died for your sins. I read this and said, they made a mistake. They said Catholic, Protestant, or Jewish. I think they gave me the New Testament and I'm not supposed to read the New Testament. <laughs> right. It sounds like Jesus. Right. And you know what he, he says? Yeah, that is Jesus. That's your Messiah. Wait a minute. That's crazy. What's my Messiah doing in my Bible? He looks and says, I said, it's got to be a New Testament. He looks over and says, no, look, Hebrew Publishing Company. Oh, Hebrew Publishing Company. Wait a minute. What's Jesus doing in my Bible? Hmm. And he said, he's your Messiah. And I said, oh, really? He said, yeah. And he then shared with me about Jesus, but he wanted to, me to read the New Testament. And I was really a little <laughs> scared about that. I, he, he said, uh, let's read something in the New Testament. He said, no, I can't. My rabbi told me never read the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And what he did was, he said, look, he looked over here and he looked around and he said, where's your rabbi? 
at least 3,000 miles away in Philadelphia. I won't tell your rabbi that you read the New Testament if you don't tell him. Oh, I was scared. I really was scared. I thought, I thought lightning was going to hit me. I thought for sure it was going to take place in Rome with a bunch of popes and be the most Gentile book I ever could read. Mm -hmm. And then I started reading. He says, look, let's turn over here. Try this. And the first thing I read in the New Testament ever, it's May 16th, 1961. I read, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. I said, what's the ruler of the Jews doing in the New Testament? He said, he's, your, he's Jewish. It's a Jewish book. Read the rest of it. And I read the whole third chapter of John. And I read first time in my life. A nice Jewish book. Never heard it before. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That's your Messiah. We'll be right back. Shalom. My name is Nicole Vaca, and I'm one of the co-producers of Our Hope podcast. We created Our Hope to be a window into the Messianic community, a place where we can discuss Israel and the Bible, and a resource for people who want to share their faith more effectively and compassionately with the Jewish community. If you are interested in supporting what we do, you can donate to Chosen People Ministries at chosenpeople.com slash donate. You can also support us by sharing this podcast on social media with your friends and family, or by writing a review on Apple Podcasts. We are so grateful for your support, and we hope you enjoy the rest of this episode. he shared with me he did kind of the romans road you know he went through some verses from the book of the romans but actually today we can do the isaiah trail the entire gospel from the jewish scriptures from the old testament i don't like to call it the old testament i like to call it the former covenant we use the word tanakh that's a, mm -hmm. a an acrostic for the old testament uh so yeah that was and that night i he, he did say this to me he said are you enjoying your life no, uh, actually, I'm making pretend. See, I thought this was a Gentile thing, getting drunk, going with the women, uh, smoking uh, smoking cigarettes, uh, uh, getting drunk. Uh, I said it's a Gentile thing. I'll just make pretend like I enjoy it. He said, if you believe in Jesus, you don't have to make pretend anymore. And you have a relationship with God. And he forgives, forgives all your sins. A relationship with God. Mm. And it's through the finished work of Jesus. And I thought the cross was such a Gentile thing. It was really an execution, uh, a form of execution at the time I, f I found out. So he said, would you like to uh, pray and receive the Messiah? Believe. The Bible, he showed me a verse that says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I thought Jesus Christ was a Gentile word. It's really Yeshua, the Messiah. Mm -hmm. It's really a Jewish guy. A Jewish, a Jewish guy around. He's born of a, he's born, he's born Jewish. He, uh, seed of David, etc." He said, why don't you pray with me and believe in Jesus? And I said, well, uh, let me think. He gave me his New Testament, and he marked up some verses and put markers in there. And uh, he said, well, you pray about it, and, and you read this. And so, so I went to bed. Now, I was in a drill hall, uh, in a bar barracks, rather, uh, and uh, it was like 3 o'clock in the morning, and you can't turn the lights on at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'd be in major trouble. Mm -hmm. Took a blanket and I put it over my head, and there was a light. I was in the top bunk, and there was a light up there. And I put the light on it under the covers, and I, I, I went. Uh, I'm supposed to believe in Jesus. Let's see. I supposed to pray to Jesus, so I prayed. Oh, I mean, I don't know if that's the right way. I was praying like in synagogue with the Hebrew. I said, listen, Jesus. I'm so, I want to believe in you. I want to believe that you died for my sins. I went to bed. I woke up in the morning. I was a crazy man. I, I, I knew he told me one thing very important. He said, if you believe in Jesus, you'll be saved. Mm. I'm not sure what that meant, but I knew that I wouldn't have to live that way any longer. And I, I don't have to make pretend any longer. And 
I ran from one end of the barracks to the other. I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. And that guy came out, the, the guys that were doing the Bible, they came out and they pulled me in and said, what'd you say? Well, I told Jesus I believe in him. Hey guys, come here, Israel believes in Jesus. Come on, uh, come on, put your hands, uh, let's pray with him. And they put their hands on me, they prayed for me, that I would grow and I would learn more about the Lord. And, and wow, it was incredible. I said, maybe I made a mistake. These guys are really praying up a storm. I don't know. This was up. So then they said, we're going to go to Bible study. Bible study? What's that? What do you mean Bible study? What do you mean? Oh, no, we got to read the word. You got to grow. And I said, well, I'm going to a movie in the, in the, in the, in the, in the base. They, they, they have a good, a good movie at the theater. Uh, I said, look, um, I don't need Bible study. Mm -hmm. And so the guy said, hey, guys, let's go to the movie with Israel and have Bible study afterwards. They, they did a good thing. Yeah. That was incredible. And we had Bible study afterwards. And uh, let's face it, the rest is basically history. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's such a beautiful story because I, I would say that the moment that it all clicked for you, connected with you, was underneath the covers by yourself yep. having that yep. moment of just kind of going to your your traditional jewish prayers but then realizing you know what i can talk to this person let me just say this to this person you know <laughs> and, right. and that i think it shows the the change that happened almost instantly and uh that that kind of just set the pace for the rest of that story i mean that that's just so awesome so tell me really quick i mean you read isaiah 53 you were shocked because you oh, thought you were already yeah. reading the new testament and then eventually yeah. you get to the new testament so what was what surprised you the most when you started reading the new testament what surprised me the most was that all these characters, all these writers and all these it was so Jewish and they always referred back to the, the Old Testament, the Jewish scriptures. Everything about the New Testament was so Jewish. I realized at that point that many Gentiles didn't know what they didn't understand it. They 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 thought that the, it's all uh, not Jewish. Mm -hmm. But it's so the one thing that surprised me so much and is that how Jewish it is. And then I read a very interesting book in the New Testament. Hebrews, come on, give me a break. <laughs> Hebrews in the New Testament. And you read that, and it refers back everything that I, I learned about in Hebrew school or growing up, mm -hmm. uh, and that it was right there. Yeah. And it's all fulfilled in the Messiah, in Jesus, the Messiah, Yeshua, mm. the Messiah. I'm so excited about it. And it, that was 60 years ago. Wow, 60 years. <laughs> so so 60 years tell, tell me about those 60 years. How How did your life change? Um, in, in these uh, 60 years, I'm sure you're as, you know, the young man that you are, that you're still learning. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you know? I'm still growing, still learning. Yeah. Well, what happened was this. The truth of the matter is, uh, I was supposed to go to Bible college in 64, mm -hmm. Moody Bible Institute. And, uh, well, I was away from the Navy and I was at home with my parents in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. And I wasn't exactly walking with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And God was chasing me. By the way, if you ever plan on, on walking away from the Lord or backsliding and, and you memorize a lot of scripture in advance, don't do that. Because if you memorize scripture, the God, Lord's not going to let you. <laughs> He's not going to let go of you. <laughs> so I had all the scriptures memorized. I was under such conviction. And I was having major trouble. My, my father sent me to a Jewish doctor. Wow. He said, we got to tell you something's wrong with Israel. He's got problems. And uh, the doctor wanted me to see a psychiatrist. I told the Jewish doctor, I believe in Jesus. My boss, my father got me a job and, and the, with, with a friend of his. And my boss said, look, you got to stop talking about Jesus in our, in our office. We're Jewish. You know? Here I was backsliding down the drain and I'm talking about Jesus to everybody. <laughs> you know, my father and my boss, both Jewish guys, they figured out what my problem was. If I meet a nice Jewish girl, I'll forget about Jesus. Well, he said, call up this, this blind date, this, this girl. So I called her up. We went out once, twice. Uh, I taught, The third time I told her I believe in Jesus. Oh, take me home. Uh, I don't want to talk to you anymore. But then she called me. You're a nice guy, but can you forget about Jesus? Well, I told her I, I would forget about Jesus. I couldn't do it. I couldn't forget about Jesus. Yeah. And um, we got married in 64. And I wasn't walking with the Lord. But in 1972, I was driving down the road. Mm -hmm. I was a salesman, outside salesman electronics. I was under such conviction. 
I, would, I just knew I had to get it back together with Jesus. I had to walk with the Lord. So I pulled the car over to the side of the road and, and um, I wiped the tears off my eyes. I was crying. Mm -hmm. And I said, Jesus, if you're really the Messiah and I'm really saved, I want a Bible right now. I had thrown all my Bibles in the garbage because my wife wouldn't, my, my uh, fiance at the time wouldn't marry me unless I threw my Bibles in the garbage. Mm. So I did it. Oh, that was terrible. Yeah, well, I was parked in front of a Christian bookstore. <laughs> I said, wait a minute. Oh, you want me to buy a Bible? Okay. That was good. I didn't know I was there. So I walked in and I told the woman in the back of the counter, I, I need a Bible. I haven't read the Bible for a few years. And she said, okay. And he wanted to give me one of these big Bibles. And I'm like, no, you can understand. My wife doesn't know I'm reading the Bible. And uh, so I, I, she gave me this little Bible. This is the Bible. Wow. She comes out from the back of the counter when she heard my story. She puts her hands on my shoulder and she prayed for me. She prayed for my salvation, my wife. She prayed that I go back to Bible college. She have a witness to my Jewish people. And I grow in the Lord. Everything she prayed for, I wish I could find her. I can't find her. Everything she prayed for came true. Wow. And I went there and I wrote in the front of the Bible when I, when I, uh, I wrote that back with Jesus this day, September 20th, 1970. Finally, I said to Judy, it's now the summer of 72. I said, Judy, I got to go to church. Oh, mother, he, he lied to us. He's believing in Jesus. He's reading the Bible. He's going to church. Um, I'm getting divorced. No, no, no divorces. My, my, un, my, my unsaved Jewish mother-in-law told her, don't get a divorce. She saved our marriage. It was incredible. And that was the summer of 72. And I go to church now. In October 1st, 1972, I went to church. She went to go roller skating with these guys, mm -hmm. but they weren't going roller skating anymore. They got together with Jesus and they were going to church Sunday night. So she said, well, can I come with you? And she went to another church in Philadelphia. And after the service, she prayed to receive Jesus with a friend of mine. He was a ham radio friend, by the way. Mm -hmm. and he was walking with the incredible guy and he prayed with Judy and Judy came home. She was home before me. And I got home. I said, Judy, you're home. Uh, you better sit down, Israel. I got saved tonight. You got saved? Yeah, I, I, I told Jesus I love him. I, I, I believe in Jesus. Yeah. Hello, pastor. I called the pastor at the church. The pastor at that church that we were go I was going to at the time yeah. was Donald Goodhart. Can you imagine Pastor Goodhart? Yeah. <laughs> pastor Goodhart. And I said, to him, you can take Judy off. The we were claiming her salvation. Every Wednesday night prayer meeting on the list, yeah. Judy Cohen. And then I said, you can take her off the list. Pray for growth. Two weeks later. Judy was baptized at the Burholm Baptist Church in Philadelphia in front of the mural of the River Jordan. Wow. So then December of 72, she's now saved October, November. Mm -hmm. It's now December. She saved about three months. And a missionary came to the church. Mm -hmm. This missionary was from this mission. She Ruth Wardell. I remember. She's since been with the, going to be the Lord. She brought a young Jewish girl uh, to give a testimony. And afterwards, Pastor Goodhart said, I'd like you to meet our Jewish believers, Israel and Judy. <laughs> and, and, and so this young girl that came with them, her name was Kitty, Kitty Simon. Kitty said, you know who Joe Finkelstein is? Joe Finkelstein, oh, who's he? You don't know what's going on in West Philadelphia? Remember, it's now 1972. Mm -hmm. It was the, the, kind of the, the middle of the, the Jesus movement and, 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 and the, the Woodstock and all that stuff. Right. And, Jews, and Jews were getting saved. It was a revival amongst young Jewish kids. So she said, oh, you don't know? And she invited us to the Bible study that he had. And Judy and I went to the Bible study. So, wow, we were teaching the book of Jacob. I said, the book of Jacob, where's that? You know, you, we, we call it James, but it's really Jacob. <laughs> I said, oh, okay. I'm learning, I'm learning all kinds of new stuff. So I went to the Bible study one time. I said, Joe, can we come back? Oh, yeah, you can come back. Three months later, we left the Baptist church. And we uh, moved to uh, Philadelphia, right where Joe Finkelstein lives. And we started a Messianic congregation. It's now, it's been called Beth Yeshua, the house of Jesus, for many years. Wow. In 1978, I came with Chosen People Ministries. And I was in uh, Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And then I moved to North Jersey. Mm -hmm. 
and then I was in uh, was a short period in California, but I was last 22 years in Florida. And now we're back in the metropolitan New York area, serving the Lord with Chosen People Ministries. I've been with the ministry since 1978. Uncle Izzy, that is amazing. <laughs> it's so it such a beautiful story. And just to kind of land the plane, is there any advice that you would give a, a young Jewish believer, new Jewish believer who is afraid to tell others about their faith? That's a very good point. Yeah, that, that's very good. Now, someone once said this. This is really important. Preach the gospel always. Always share the gospel. Mm -hmm. And if necessary, use words. In other words, live your life in such a way. I made sure that I, whenever I meet anyone that's Jewish, that I realize that I am Jewish. I might not be Hasidic and Orthodox and legalistic, but I'm Jewish. And we need to help them to understand that our faith is a Jewish faith. Mm -hmm. This one time going through the, the New Covenant, the New Testament, understand, seeing that, you can understand clearly that this is a Jewish faith. Mm -hmm. Uncle Ozzy, thank you so much. And we're so glad to hear your story in a different format because we didn't get the full story in your testimony video. That's on <laughs> Um oh, yes. So it's great to hear some all, uh, all these other mini stories that have led to where you are today. And we continue to pray for you and we, we continue to just thank God for you and your wife and, and what you've done for this ministry and for the lives of so many across the country. So thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. My pleasure. But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening for our well-being fell upon him, and by his scourging we are healed. This messianic prophecy in the Old Testament has paved the way for many Jewish people to find their Messiah. The New Testament is a continuation and completion to the full story of salvation which God had planned from the very beginning. As a Jewish believer in the Messiah, Israel's faith is now complete. For those of us who follow Messiah, we can lovingly show our Jewish friends and family the Messianic prophecies in the Old Testament. And when the time is right, invite them to read the rest of this redemption story. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Our Hope. This episode was brought to you by Dr. Mitch Glazer, Israel Cohen, Nicole Vaca, Grace Sui, Kyron Bautista, and Neil Swarovski. I'm Abe Vasquez. Until next time. Thanks for listening to Our Hope. If you like our show and want to know more, check out OurHoperPodcast.com or ChosenPeople.com. See you next time.